what needs to happen for us to like get it in our human form it's like it just seems to be like a constant forgetting and then a remembering it's like i drop into feeling separate and inadequate and human and then i do all my things that enable me to remember that we're part of a divine connected goodness a divine connected godness this field of consciousness that we're all in equal co-creating collaborating part of the edge of consciousness evolving through our evolution as we turn our heart from fear to love again and again and we open it and we heal the pain of our ancestors man they were in so much pain my heart goes out to them my heart goes out to them but you know in a lot of these courses you'll see they're like oh yeah give the pain back to the ancestors give the pain back to the ancestors I'm like don't give the pain back to the ancestors they had a terrible time don't we have embodied here in this timeline in this family story to feel their pain and heal it and take the lessons about what works and what doesn't work and offer it to the field that's our purpose that's our philanthropy that's it's not about our projects as wonderful as they may be it's not about the good deeds we do charitably it is about the destiny in our hearts to turn our whole family's pain into learning and understanding and to tr transform it back into love to liberate our children from having to repeat the same cycles of pain which will inevitably happen otherwise and so our job is to it's just to send love back to our ancestors to thank them for doing the best that they could and to be able to then transform that so it doesn't play out our life in the same way and just offer that up to the field and the human tide of consciousness just rises one half of one half of one half of percent because you're less likely to be an ass today then what a beautiful gift and so we can get caught in doing the work and doing the work is so important but so is it important just to just to also not identify with the worker not to identify with the work not to be pulled into the toil and the struggle and the trouble of the pain of working through all these things that happens on a level but we must also balance that with the recognition with the remembrance of the absolute perfection of the goodness of god's love for us not as some separate divine being with a beard on a throne of light, I don't suspect, but more really the aspect of ourselves that is seeking for the most beautiful expression of health, of happiness, of kindness, of compassion. The same energy that knows how to heal our finger when we cut it, the intelligence of the heart that emanates and communicates. Now let's take a holy moment right now. Let's take a holy moment right now. Just stop what you're doing, take a breath, look around you and realize how lucky we are yeah the world is mental and 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 dissolving into madness and destruction and all manner of terrible things and yet what an insane opportunity to be on this rock hurtling through space at this time to be embodied exploring what it is to be human at this time in humankind's evolution with this planet as verdant and glorious and as beautiful as it is, with just a sip of water being enough just to break your heart, let alone a strawberry, or one present kiss with your beloved or your favorite oak tree or your forearm. It's, we can get so involved in our day-to-day -day life, or we can get so involved in the seriousness of our religiosity or our healing, It's all here. And the struggle is part of the divine field. The struggle is part of how we're loved. It's not the unfortunate thing that we need to work through. It is, it is, it is the truth of the emergent possibility of you, of the true potential of you. And the entropic forces inside our heart and seemingly outside of ourselves that squash us and make it difficult to believe that we could be free, make it difficult to believe that we have something of value to offer. It's meant to be hard. It's meant to make us doubt. 
it's meant to make us double down on our virtue and double down on our discipline and double down on 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 amplifying the love that we bring to everyone everywhere we go so that we can revivify our faith and reconnect to the field and then our heart remembers and we experience that bliss up our spine like a beautiful baseline making us move our body and look around at our shared revelers and remember the importance of life and love and pleasure and goodness and goodness with effort stealing ourselves against temptation stealing ourselves against doing the easy thing and the more i've been thinking about it the more i realize our mad inner cave person's insatiable desire for efficiency and comfort minimal calorific output for the purpose of the greatest comfort and sense of safety has historically and indeed still currently done so much damage to our capacity to do what's right to be able to find comfort in the discomfort to be able to find fortitude and courage it's important we're all playing a part and we have to pay attention and we have to not get so caught up in the minutiae and mechanics of our of our everyday life and remember that we're part of a connected field of consciousness working out how to be a more evolved and beautiful version of itself through us as us this is god's plan unfolding as us through us and it's an incredible opportunity an incredible experience and it's by choice i i had a terrible time a couple of days ago i woke up with this aspect of my psychology attacking me at literally hurling hatred at myself it was so brutal i woke up in bed and as i fell into it and as I've processed these last couple of days, it's forced me to reconnect to the joy of what it is to be here. And to transcend the need for being perfect and to love ourselves anyway. And to put our arms around those parts of us that doubt and are afraid. I see the deeper spiritual purpose of doubt. Question everything. Ask yourself, how could what I'm doing be done better and not to load up your to-do list but to load up your inspirational list like how much more joyful would it be if you develop your capacity to dance more or, or play more musical instruments or play a musical instrument more elegantly or to prepare food more lovingly or to have more quality time with your loved ones or your children or your elderly family members how can we make it artful the, the, the vibration of potential is always seeking for the most artful and loving and creative expression of itself. We get to be the paintbrush. We get to be the flute. And what wants to be expressed with how you walk down the street or how kind you are to the next person you deal with in some random shop? How would you like to leave everything better? Not because you should, but because you can. Unconditional love is what we're made of and what we're here to learn about. But not by being perfect. How is that possible? And not certainly by life being easy. We only get to discover unconditional love because we're imperfect and because life is challenging. That is God's plan. That is this universe's invitation. Can you be here and stand it? Can you be here and love it all? Can you love yourself? no matter the things that you think should be different? And can you work on actively improving without needing to have those things improved to love yourself? Because if you can bring that to yourself and then you can bring that to me and I'd be very grateful for that, as would everybody else say. So take a moment, take a holy moment, connect back in, do whatever you need to do. Reach out to people if you need support and know that there are people around you that also need support. A kind text, a kind word, just to focus on your heart and think to yourself, who needs to receive a loving text from me today? 
Maybe someone you've not spoken to for ages. Who could you pop a kind of like a handwritten card in the post to? Life wants to love through you. God wants to love through you. Godness, goodness, the universe, your heart, your spirit. Be enthusiastic about strawberries and kisses and rain and have hope that through all the challenges that are happening in the world right now, there are great possibilities for us to come together and think differently about how to be, how to educate, how to parent, how to train our children so that they will never go to war. How to understand how to resolve conflict how to make things better and how we can build a more beautiful world. That's the calling. And it can be big and it can be small. It can be both. You could do whatever you do, even if you're on the front lines, battling away to make a change for something really important. Do it with love in your heart. Do it with peace in your heart. Don't push from despair. Flow from hope that we're building a beautiful world that our children's children probably won't see completed. And that's okay. Keep your heart open, keep your head up, believe, have faith, do whatever you need to do to connect to whatever your version of spirit or God is. Do it regularly and take a moment to recognize that bliss is a choice. Eden is here. Sending you all much love.